the Nazi rise to power. Before the onset of the Great Depression in Germany in 1929-1930, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party for short, was a small party on the radical right of the German political spectrum. In the Reichstag, Parliament, elections of May 2, 1928, the Nazis received only 2.6% of the national vote. As a result of the election, a grand coalition of Germany's Social Democratic, Catholic Center, German Democratic, and German People's Parties governed Weimar Germany into the first six months of the economic downturn. During 1930-1933, the mood in Germany was grim. The worldwide economic depression had hit the country hard, and millions of people were out of work. The unemployed were joined by millions of others who linked the depression to Germany's national humiliation after defeat in World War I. Many Germans perceived the parliamentary government coalition as weak and unable to alleviate the economic crisis. Economic misery, fear, anger, and impatience with the apparent failure of the government to manage the crisis offered fertile ground for the rise of Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. Hitler was a powerful and spellbinding orator who, by tapping into the anger and helplessness felt by a large number of voters, attracted a wide following of Germans desperate for change. Nazi electoral propaganda promised to pull Germany out of the depression. The Nazis pledged to restore German cultural values, reverse the provisions of the Treaty of Versailles, turn back the perceived threat of a communist uprising, put the German people back to work, and restore Germany to its rightful position as a world power. Hitler and other Nazi propagandists were highly successful in directing the population's anger, fear against the Jews and against the communists and social democrats. Hitler and the Nazis often referred to the latter as November criminals. Hitler and other Nazi speakers carefully tailored their speeches to each audience. For example, when speaking to businessmen, the Nazis downplayed anti-Semitism and instead emphasized anti-communism and the return of German colonies lost through the Treaty of Versailles. When addressed to soldiers, veterans, or other nationalist interest groups, Nazi propaganda emphasized military build-up and return of other territories lost after Versailles. Center-party politician and Reich Chancellor Heinrich Brüning induced the aging Reich president, World War I Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg to dissolve the parliament in July 1930 and schedule new elections for September 1930. To dissolve the parliament, the president used Article 48 of the German Constitution. This article permitted the German government to govern without parliamentary consent, and was to be applied only in cases of direct national emergency. Bruning miscalculated the mood of the nation after six months of economic depression. The Nazis won 18.3% of the vote and became the second largest political party in the country. The Bruning government sought and failed to build a parliamentary majority that would exclude social democrats, communists, and Nazis. In 1932, Hindenburg dismissed Bruning and appointed Franz von Papen, a former diplomat and center party politician, as chancellor. Papen dissolved the Reichstag again but the July 1932 elections brought the Nazi party 37.3% of the popular vote, making it the largest political party in Germany. The communists received 14.3% of the vote. As a result, more than half the deputies in the 1932 Reichstag had publicly committed themselves to ending parliamentary democracy. When Papen was unable to obtain a parliamentary majority to govern, his opponents forced him to resign. His successor, General Kurt von Schleicher, dissolved the Reichstag again. In the ensuing elections in November 1932, the Nazis lost ground, winning 33.1% of the vote. The communists, however, gained votes, winning 16.9%. As a result, the small circle around President Hindenburg came to believe, by the end of 1932, that the Nazi party was Germany's only hope to forestall political chaos ending in a communist takeover. Nazi negotiators and propagandists did much to enhance this impression. On January 30, 1933, President Hindenburg appointed Adolf Hitler Chancellor of Germany. They hoped to use Hitler's popularity with the masses to buttress a return to conservative authoritarian rule, perhaps even a monarchy. Within two years, 
However, Hitler and the Nazis outmaneuvered Germany's conservative politicians to consolidate a radical Nazi dictatorship completely, subordinate to Hitler's personal will. Thank you.